All right, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, I got something really neat for you guys. It's the Bissell Spot Clean Pro up against the Rigid Portable Vac DIY Extractor. Everybody's been asking a lot of questions about these machines, and I wanna answer some of those questions and show you these guys in a head-to-head -head battle. Stick around to the end. Today I got some bonus footage at the end where you'll get to see both of these machines going side by side, pass by pass, so you can really see that head-to-head -head performance on these. But without any further delay, let's jump into the video. So let's talk about that cost. How much is this thing gonna cost me? <laughs> That's what everybody's thinking right now. Now at the time of the filming, the the DIY Rigid Portable Vac Extractor checked in at about $355. Now that's assuming you don't have any parts or pieces. And while we're talking about parts and pieces, I'll leave a link down below that has every single part and piece. They're all super plug and play, super easy. I also did a video on this that shows me putting it all together so you could check that out. But also another neat thing about this system, if you already have the shop vac and you already have a hose, now you're looking at about $198 for a decent machine that's pretty cool so and if you do come in with a different type of shop vac i don't know the sizes of every single fitting but in the video i did i show you how to measure them and you can make sure that you get the right one to convert uh you know the head to the hose that you have now at the time of the filming the bissell spot clean pro checked in at about 145 dollars Boy, that's really reasonable because that includes everything. But keep in mind that this is a DIY kind of homeowner, occasional use type of extractor. This isn't designed for professionals that are doing nonstop extracting all day long, every day. Now, if that is you, if you're a professional and that's all you're doing all day as extractions, then I'll leave a link to a really killer machine. Go check it out and just go ahead and buy that and get on with it. And if you don't have the money for it and you're using these machines to get by, consider saving your money and purchasing the big one. You know what I mean? <laughs> the price is the price, but boy, I want to know the quality and I know you do too. <laughs> the rigid portable vac, this thing is made for being on the construction site. You can beat it up, you can drag it, you can you can do whatever you want. It's super thick plastic. The hose is thick. The head on this is super heavy duty acrylic. It's not going to break unless you smash it onto the ground. Uh, all in all, this can run for hours, days without, you know, little to no wear and tear on it. Now, on the other hand, when you get over to the Bissell Spot Clean Pro, this is more designed for a homeowner. You know, regular spot cleaning use, occasional full vehicle extractions, and taking care of it, cleaning it out, not dragging it around by the hose. I've got some reports of people dragging it around by the hose and they ended up ripping the hose or dropping it and cracking the machine. Um, this is just not commercial grade. But if you take good care of it, you're gonna get good, long durability out of it. I've had it for several years, no problems whatsoever. And there's a lot of really, uh, you know, popular detailers out there that use this thing for years with no problem whatsoever. Good little machine. Here is an often overlooked aspect of a machine. Where are you gonna put this thing? Now, with the Rigid Portable Vac, this is a larger machine. The Bissell Spot Clean Pro, this is tiny. This fits on top of a shelf. It fits great right underneath my vacuum cleaner. It takes up about 18 inches or so by about a foot wide. Very little footprint. On the other hand, the Rigid Portable Vac is a larger machine. It takes up a little bit more floor space or up on a shelf. You gotta factor that in. And when you get into the professional models, they're like large suitcases. They need to have a dedicated spot in the garage. So so again, the amount of space it's taking up, it has to make sense for how often you're using it. So now let's talk about setting these machines up and getting them ready for use. The Bissell Spot Clean Pro, just pull it off the shelf, pop the water bottle off, fill it up with just cold tap water out of your uh, hose bib, or a good tip from a viewer, use hot water that you heat it up. Put it back into the machine, unreal your cord, plug it into the wall, and you're all set to go. Now let's look at the rigid portable vac. Just unreel the hose, screw it onto a hose bib. Again, if you have a hot water hose bib in your garage, use hot water. That works great. That's what I do. Right over here on my uh, solar water, boom, just tap it in and I got, you know, 150 degree water coming out of that thing straight into the extractor. That's nice. Another thing to consider with these machines is these are now dedicated extractors. You still need a vacuum. You still got to get the particulate up before we can extract. 
Now with the Bissell Spot Clean Pro, I have my wall mounted vac over here. That thing's amazing. Or you could have a shop vac or, or whatever combination of vacuum cleaner that you may have, perfect. But with the rigid portable vac, what's kind of neat about this, if you buy an additional hose, you can essentially plug in the additional hose and boom, you're vacuuming. Uh, you then when you're done, you plug back in the extractor, boom, and you're all set. The only extra piece you'll need is a different filter. Now keep in mind, I would do the vacuuming first, get all the dry particulate in, dump it out, put my wet uh, filter on, and then boom, my extractor hose and start extracting. Now again, this isn't practical if you're doing three or four vehicles a day, but for you guys that are doing one, maybe two, this is gonna be great. Now that we've got done the boring part, I wanna see these things in action, and I know you do too. Now I decided today on my test seat to get some Hawaii red dirt, the gnarliest stuff on the planet. It just stains everything. It's super hard to get out. I filled it up in a cup, put it on the seat, Boom, oh, that is a muddy mess, look at that. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking there's no way this is coming out. I don't know, give me a chance before you, before you go that route. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep dumping it on. Boy, that is gonna be hard to get out. Man, did I make a mistake on this one. So we'll just spread it around, get it nice and even, get it nice and saturated into the seat. I'm gonna let that dry and bake on there for at least four or five hours until it's just good and penetrated in there. And that's what we ended up with. Just Hawaii red dirt dried into the seat and we'll see what'll happen. Let's give it a try. So now let's talk about pre-treating the fabric. When something is this dirty, we gotta put a product on it, let it start to break it down before we do any extracting. Today I'll be using a product from uh, PNS, Carpet Bomber, this stuff's amazing. You can uh, dilute it anywhere from five to one to eight to one, depending on how dirty the fabric is. I'll mix it up into my pump sprayer and we'll go ahead and start applying it onto the seat. Now coming out of that sprayer, you're gonna see some good foam action. I like the foam, a lot of people don't like the foam, but I like it because it tells me exactly where the product is and exactly what's going on. Now we'll let that product sit and dwell on there anywhere from two to five minutes. We want it to have plenty of time to do its job, but we don't want it drying on the fabric. So depending on your work environment, anywhere from two to five minutes is a good dwell time. Let's look at this Bissell Spot Clean Pro and oh man, it's yanking some of that red dirt out of there. You gotta love that. We're gonna do some passes here. Now this is gonna take some elbow grease. When you're in a, you know, a homeowner model type machine, it's just gonna take more, more passes, more time. But you can see it's really diving into that uh, fabric and getting a good bit of that red dirt out with little to no effort. So I'm applying pressure to the trigger, spraying water onto the seat. Now you want just enough water to wet the fabric nicely, but you don't want to flood the fabric and have it running everywhere. So you'll start measuring and metering the amount of water you're using. Keep making passes until it starts to come clear. Now you'll see it's just mainly clear. Yeah, it's dragging a little dirt in from the sides and there's a little bit of suds left, but all in all, that's pretty clear. And I'll tell you what, underneath that fabric looks amazing. Look at that. So now let's speed this up and just get this whole entire seat done. And uh, it just makes short work of it. And it brings it back to a condition that I would have to say is more than acceptable. Look at that guys, that looks good. So after we get a good cleaning done, it's advisable to come back and do a dry pass, meaning don't apply any more water to it. Just run the extractor across, try to pull every single bit of water you can out of it. Here you're also looking, is any more dirt coming up? Any more suds? Do I have to do another application? And address it as needed. So that's pretty much it. Now let's look at the DIY Rigid Portable Vac. This thing's gonna be a little bit more robust. You're gonna see it here in a minute. More water comes out more action out of the head, and boy, look at that. That is amazing. It's just coming, firing right out of there. We'll keep taking passes on it. Again, applying pressure to the trigger, putting just the right amount of water, the, the speed in which you move the head across the fabric, and the amount of water you're applying comes with practice, but once you get it down, you won't see any mess. You won't see any spilling off to the side. You'll just be getting every bit of water you're spraying into the head and up into the machine. And look at that thing working, wow. And I love that super see-through acrylic head on that. That's amazing. It gives you all the, and people ask, 
why not just use the shop vac without this head? I have to see in that sight window what's going on. Right here, I know. Look at all that dirt. Look at all that foam coming up. I got to continue to apply water, continue to make passes until we start seeing some clear liquid come through, which takes quite a while, especially when it's this dirty. Now, this is an extreme circumstance. Most people's fabrics are not this dirty. It might only take a few passes. And look at that. You can still see we got a little bit of dirt coming up out of it. A little bit of suds left. So I'm just going to keep making passes on this thing until it clears up a little bit. And it's kind of fun to watch too. I have to say, a lot of people just like watching these extractions. I get it. Look at that. That's cool. And now you're seeing less and less dirt. Yes, it is pooling a little bit from the side that I haven't cleaned yet. And um, most of the suds are gone. And just keep going back and forth until you get it all cleared up. And while we're talking about it, you know, how much soap or how much product or cleaner you put in this fabric is going to directly translate to the cleaning power as well as how much effort it's going to take to get it all out. We want all of it out. And now you can see most of the water coming out of there is pretty clear. Again, a little bit trickling in from the side, but overall, the majority of the pass I'm working on is nice and clear. So this machine's doing an awesome job. So now we'll just do a quick, you know, 30 times speed and just get this seat nice and cleaned up. And wow, look at that. It looks like brand new again. These machines are awesome. That's why everybody loves them so much. Even though that came pretty clean, I always recommend using a drill brush. Good soft bristle so it doesn't damage the fabric. Good quality drill so that you have a good user experience here. And um, we'll go ahead and drill brush the seat. Once we get that drill brushed, man, you're going to start to see some dirt coming out of it again. Now, it just is evidence that like when you agitate the fabric is when you really get all the dirt out and you're going to see that here in a minute. Look at that fabric underneath as we run that extractor over it again. Still plenty of dirt coming out of it. Look at that. So it brought a whole nother layer of uh, cleaning depth to this. So I always recommend using a drill brush. It is a smart play if your seat is incredibly dirty to go ahead and hit it with the uh, extractor first, get the majority of it so you're not making a mud pie out of it. Uh, then come back, drill brush again, and uh, get it extracted up. That looks great, look at that, wow. Here's a cool tip for you. Take a clean microfiber towel, wipe it up and down the fabric. You're trying to get any surface dampness off. It's not gonna be completely dry now. This has to air dry a while, but this is more about making sure that the grains in that fabric aren't kind of matted down or pointing in a weird direction, and they're gonna look nice when it fully dries. So now what some of you have been waiting for, the pot of chili. <laughs> Here it is, and look at that, wow. I can't believe all that came out of the seat. And that's just out of half of the seat. That's the Bissell Spot Clean Pro. So that did a really nice job there. Now let's look at the Rigid Portable Vac. That's a much bigger container. That holds about two and a half gallons of liquid, and the Bissell has to be emptied after even less than a gallon. So the working time on the uh, Rigid shop vac is much longer too. So let's talk about the cleanup. All you have to do with the Bissell Spot Clean Pro, just clean out the, the container. Again, that's about a gallon size container there. Just give it a good rinse and then turn it upside down and let it dry. The Bridget Portable Vac, open the lid. And again, that holds about two and a half gallons of water. So you're gonna get much longer work time. Uh, give it a nice rinse. And everybody always asks, Jeremy, well, your tools look brand new. Of course they do. I take care of them. That's the whole point. You should too. Now, another neat tip, and I covered this in the past, rinse that uh, filter out. You know, all that chemical, that's some strong stuff. We do not want that just eating at our filter. So give that a good rinse. Dry that out too. So here's my overall final thoughts on this. If you're a professional detailer, 
get the professional model. I know you guys keep saying that, but there's always people down in the comments going, you should get the professional model. You I get it, you should. But if you're a professional detailer on a budget trying to get started and you want to offer extractions, but you don't have the huge money, this is going to be awesome. Durability is really high. It holds about two and a half, three gallons of water. It says four, but that's not quite accurate when it comes to the water uh, capacity. So it gets good running time. Overall, really durable commercial build, priced at a, good, at a good point. But here's what I have to say about that. Save your money and get a pro one. This is gonna get you through though. It's gonna get you through to the finish line. If you're a homeowner and you're only doing a couple extractions a year and spot cleaning on a routine basis, don't have a lot of storage space. That's a huge one. This requires hardly any storage space. That's the claim to fame with this. Small uh, footprint, big results. So this one's a great one. All in all, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. Let's just get it out of the way. Oh, man, both of these are sick machines, depending on what you're using them for. Now, let's get to the head-to-head -head battle where I show both of these just in action. And while I'm talking about it, if you're interested in just seeing, you know, nasty, gnarly stuff get pulled out of a seat with some dance music playing in the background. <laughs> I got another really popular video down there that I think you'll like. Otherwise, enjoy this one. We'll see you on the next one. If you haven't subscribed, come on, man, do it. That's how I know you like the channel. I'll see you on the next one.